Hello? Yeah, okay. The method that uh, we are talking uh, so far about it uh, to have uh, some indexes, there are several uh, indexes to show uh, how is the water quality. But uh, the problem is that we usually need uh, some indicators uh, to compare the water resources. If the water resources here is better or in another uh, place is uh, better. Several uh, water indicate indexes uh, are developed in the history. And uh, different, uh, here we have uh, around uh, six that has developed before. Uh, and here you can see the method that they are using. For example, the first one is the scatter score index, which uh, the objective of this is the water quality. And this method uh, using um, uh, mining, uh, and it was used for mining sites in the USA. This is one of the index, for example. For example, another one is this one. We can see it. overall index of pollution. It's uh, for um, the objective of this was for river health and it uh, assessment and classification of a number of water quality here, which is uh, here. But in this report that we are explaining, it uh, used the Canadian standard for uh, calculating an index, quality water index, Canadian quality water index. Uh, they use this uh, method and we will explain how is this method. This is the uh, method that uh, one, F2 and F3. F1 is represent the scope and it shows that how many percent of parameters is out of the uh, range. For example, if you are uh, in total area, you are considering considering F2. F2 represent frequency. The percentage of individual tests within each parameter that exceeded uh, the guideline. It's related to the station. Uh, in one station, how many percentage, uh, uh, sorry, in one, each parameters have uh, read in each year at least four year, four times and three years, three uh, successes year. So we had 12 times of reading the parameter, each parameters, yes? So for example, these parameters, whether all the countries are considering the which parameters you are going to uh, consider for your study. Um, for this study that we are talking, they use the WHO parameters, uh, which we, these parameters. They considered these, uh, all these um, parameters for uh, comparing India and other countries to each other. That's but there is a rule. They cannot use all of these parameters. Uh, uh, yeah. data limitations. Yes, yes. And other thing is, uh, suppose uh, these parameters, we need to change, uh, I think it's also based on uh, location specific. Maybe that means that uh, suppose streams are there, mm -hmm. rivers are there, yeah. ponds are there. So it is a site specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 for example, you are studying a river or the percentage of individual tests within each parameter that exists. Uh, test here means that uh, each time that you get the data. For example, you have, uh, as I told you, we have the river and we had different station. In different, uh, in each station, uh, um, in each year, you are um, reading, for example, EC four times. And you are repeating, looking in individual parameter with different parts. But it depends. Maybe you are studying one location or you want to consider all river together. If you want to make a number for all river, then you will consider all the stations together uh, 
as whole. Uh, you have all data in one Excel file and you analyze them. But if you are, you want to make this index for one data, and from these 40 data, which is from the different years or different months or different days, we, 10 of them are not working. 10 of them is uh, out of the limit. Then 10 divided by 40. So we can calculate F2. F3 represents the amplitude. Have your Excel file and you have all the tests, yes, regarding to all parameters. Uh, here we are not uh, limit to any parameters. We have all the parameters, all the tests, all the data that we have. We uh, um, understand which of them is out of the range and then we calculate for all of them this. Fail test value divided by guideline and then the sum for example is 20 for example is 20 divided by 400 because this is the total number of the test not the failed test total number of the test so you can calculate this NSE then when you have the NSE you can calculate F3 and when you put F3 also here then you can calculate WQ it for all for example, if you want to uh, compare two rivers to each other as a total, then you can consider 10 stations on, on this river and the 10 stations for the other river. And then calculate one WQI for this river and one WQI for the second river. Then the stations in the India and you will put all of them in one pool and you can calculate one number for them. Of course, it is rough because it is in total consider, it is not detail, but it can give a number is how is, what a, because when you want to compare for example, India with Iran, India with Germany, India with other country, then this rough number can give us some idea in to compare different years to each other or you can compare, uh, get it for an average for all years. So it depends on you in which scale and which resolution you can use it. You must learn this technique and then you can use it. But there are some uh, points to calculating uh, this. If I remember, in t as we discussed with Dr. Prasad, uh, if, uh, we cannot um, see all these parameters in all the stations. So in totally, you decide based on what you are, for example, if you are uh, checking the drinking water, if you are checking the irrigation water, then you don't need to uh, consider all of these parameters. Finally, you reach to, can I use these two parameters in my test or not? This is a question. Uh, the, the answer that this report ha have to in and also the Canadian uh, water quality index, the guidelines said at least there should be four parameters measured in this uh, uh, station. At least four parameters and at least each year four times the stations that it is four times, uh, at, le at least uh, mm, uh, four parameters and one time you calculate with assumption that you consider only the station that has at least three and then compare the number uh, because you will have two WQI and you can see if there is a lot of change or not. Maybe you see that if you get it three or if you index. If you, uh, one time you can consider all these parameters together then you have one water quality index, a total water quality index, which consider all the things, acceptability and health. It is a global water quality index. And you can also uh, human health in, uh, issues. And one time you can calculate the water quality index only based on ac uh, acceptability. And then you can understand how much this water, water source is acceptable. Yes. So you can, uh, I am uh, trying to say that you can, uh, you have a rule for calc in different years. We don't have so much change in the years. It was constant. Okay.
Okay, if you have not any question about this part, then we can start water quality modeling. Uh, is there any question? Okay, so uh, we start with water quality uh, modeling. Before, uh, n not exact empirical, uh, you do experiments and you see what happens. Uh, or in the field studies, you put a gauge into the river and you will see how much rain come and you will measure also the water depths into the river. So, you will everything, we try to use the analytical method to understand what is it uh, happening behind. Some science are more based on experiment. And some science are going to base more on more analytical theories. And uh, our major is usually is something between both of. In deterministic models, uh, they are based on the physical uh, uh, um, physical properties and the dynamics of the uh, um, natural phenomena that happens, and they will give you the exact numbers, they will say a little bit higher, maybe it is a little bit downer. So, this is another kind of modeling. We consider these uncertainties, so we will have a range of depths and probability. It is more than 80 percent, we will have this depth. This, these kind of models are a stochastics model. They, they give us some uh, thing to model advection and dispersion in the river. It can be a white box model because you, you know the formula, formulation of advection and dispersion. You can um, uh, formulate it for a certain river and then you write a numerical model or, uh, the, or analytical model to solve the equation and you can understand if you put uh, and reach to a number. You know it exactly. But in the black box model, uh, is used when you cannot un you cannot understand what's really happening. As an example, in our rela uh, ra uh, major, it's rainfall uh, runoff model models. You don't know what really happened when because it is not based on the um, uh, physical equation. It is not a physical based model. Uh, you give some data to him to it then it's trained and it gives you the results and then you can use it. So, it is again black box model. The conceptual, uh, I will tell you about later and you can also again gray box is again is in the middle representation and we are going mostly through the white box model. We don't want to talk about gray box, black box, uh, I mean this, the things that in this course we are talking about it is white box model because we want to uh, exactly uh, model what happens inside the uh, water when uh, it moves and goes away. Find the models also based on the data that they, they are using from the models that fully data oriented. It means that they are only based on the models. Uh, uh, based on the ne uh, data like neural networks. Neural networks get the, your input and get your uh, output data and then, do you know what is neural network models? Models are uh, uh, some kind of not uh, regression models. It's You can consider it as a regression model, but it's not a regression model. It's much more than a regression model. Uh, neural network uh, models are based on uh, our uh, brain, how our brains work. When you learn the things, you don't learn about the dynamics. For example, when you are going to play uh, ne neurons, yes, some neurons, and they they related to each other. And by practicing, they will, will learn. They do, with, they learn with try and error. You do something and it's wrong. You do it again, it's wrong, and you do it several times, sometimes true, sometimes wrong. And in this case, your brain learn how he should do. And you never understand, uh, if you yourself want to know what, what are you doing, another story that you should go and learn about it, we cannot 
just explain it and even myself are not very uh, professional in neural network because this is not my field of my uh, works but I know the basics how it works and I think for you is also sufficient to know if you want to work later on on the neural network you should read books about it and you know how but again you and there are and some output data then the, the, that software try to find relations between the neurons and teach the neurons to work well to predict when you give uh, rainfall it predict the runoff and it will learn and after it learns you can do it you can give it uh, uh, rainfall data and it give you what would be the runoff and it's the till fully process oriented data which is deterministic numerical models they are not based on the data uh, yes of course they have we have no model that they, they need no data all models need some data for calibration and everything but they need the less data to work so these curves show you how uh, uh, more detailed information about these things in this book Okay, we have uh, now some general information uh, about the modeling and our field, the hydraulic will be divided in four major area, which is uh, again related to the topics that I am talk uh, talking so far. One of, and the second one is the applied area, which tran transfer theoretical knowledge and, and to, uh, uh, to, to application and you use it. And the third, is the computational hydraulic which is the topic of the uh, discourse which solve a specific problems by combining mathematics uh, what happened in the um, canals channels rivers and everything you do it experimentally so it is again uh, in accordance with what we are saying two side theoretical empirical the third the third uh, first is theoretical I, I'm going because I in the next slide I am going to say a very uh, valuable information deterministic and physical based how we can um, uh, analyze one uh, scientific water related subject okay so we, we are going to talk about this we, we want we have river flow we want to analyze this river flow we have flow in the pipes we want to analyze them but with a slide i like this uh, very much because it gives uh, it is uh, again from another book i forget to put the uh, reference for it but it is from a book uh, and i add this uh, reference before i give it to you and also if you want i will give this reference it's very uh, uh, nice uh, dividing how we can analyze it so at first look at it a little bit because uh, I want to before we go to the modeling you have we don't have any categories in in your minds you all all of you pass um, uh, pass the courses like fluid mechanics hydraulic hydrology hydrology yes all of them are used for analyzing water movement yes hydrology is for analyzing the water movement hydraulic is analyzing for uh, water movement open channel hydraulics that you pass mix or hydraulic computational hydraulics for uh, uh, I mean for numerical uh, models numerical methods like Navier Stokes equations have you heard Navier Stokes sand Venant equations yes these equations you all of them are uh, for analyzing the water movement but how they come and those Manning, Manning equation yes you are using for understanding it is a model yes and for relating the discharge and depth 
you can use Santvenant equation also for relating the, the discharge to the depths. Again, Santvenant equation. What is the difference between them? Where are they? Where are they come from? This is in this slide. You will have in uh, come to your minds when I say, for example, water quality modeling. Which which what comes to, uh, to your mind? Or not water quality modeling, model. It model is better. Uh, when when I say model, when you hear uh, the the name of the model, what comes into your mind? What is your expectation of the model? You have a river and you make it a smaller. No, we are talking about mathematical model. When we say mathematical model, which comes to your mind? What is the uh, is it a software? What is it? What is it? Is it a software or is it a uh, this this? Okay, we can't the layout. It's come to your mind. So you have uh, nothing comes to your mind. Uh, whatever you come say, say it. Whatever you are, do you think his, she, 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 she thinks like an equation, she thinks like a layout, she thinks. Uh, yes, this is the definition, so, but uh, is it, uh, do you think is it a complicated thing or is it, it is a very uh, uh, easy thing? Is it FIFLO or is it fluent? For me, for example, for uh, many times when I was a student, solving number equations, uh, and when you run it, it takes 10, 10, 10 days to run for a small part uh, uh, with a very good computer to say what happens. Uh, I, I was always thinking about something very complicated. But in reality, the model can be equation. Y equals 2 multiplied by x can be a model. I mean, uh, it's not a equation which, uh, or, um, when you had the uh, uh, the data from uh, first bond of the Moody's, you put it in the very simple equation, and we you get the suspended sediment. This is a this is a model. It is a black box model, which is based on the regression analysis. So, I told you, it's good to know these names. Later on, it's would, uh, fluent is a model. Uh, which can uh, solve Navier-Stokes equation for both incompressible and compressible fl uh, fluids. Uh, uh, and uh, it's very, because it is very complicated, so when you want to model something, it takes a lot of time to solve the equations, and maybe some days, uh, some days with very good computers, it works to model only 10 centimeter or 1 meter of uh, one pipe or one uh, river or whatever. It's, I mean, uh, it's very complicated uh, model. But it is model and uh, follow all the... When we want to examine one uh, phenomena, like uh, I, I, I say an example about the uh, transition. You, you get the water from a river, uh, from a bigger channel, and you want to make a transition to a, uh, a smaller one, yes? And you want to water regulating systems. I don't know what is the name, or hydraulic structure systems. May, uh, you studied in your courses, maybe, yes? To how to design a transition, yes? A small design, uh, small column design structure from USBR, we usually use this one to how to, or how to make a shoot for bringing a which goes to the left. We use a bend, yes? We want to analyze the, the flow here. These are our questions in hydraulic, yes? We want to answer them. How we can answer these questions? From the physical base view, deterministic, theoretical, deterministic. We can look to this question. Usually we use system approach for um, 
modeling. If we want to see it rough, not in detail, we use system approach. In system approach, it can be constant volume, it can be constant mass system. In dynamics, we usually have constant. This approach is constant mass. I consider a constant mass which moves from one place to another place. Yes? I think you, uh, you um, uh, when I am explaining, you remember the things from uh, your fluid mechanics courses and you will understand how this slide would be very important. But in fluids, uh, and it is very practical mass, the mass does not change when they move. When, your car, when the car is going, the, the, the um, mass of the car does not change in the time. But when you are, we are talking about the fluids, then it is not uh, like this, because the mass will change usually. Yes, in some examples it does not change. For example, if you uh, consider a uh, cylinder, which mass constant system approach again um, for that. But in most fluid me uh, me mechanics, uh, it is not like this. Uh, the um, uh, mass changes, yes? Because of that, in fluid mechanics, we use control volume. Now, you, did you remember control volume? We, uh, whenever you wanted to solve the problems in the mecha uh, fluid mechanics, we, we check a control volume. We define the inputs and outputs, and we produce different uh, uh, formula from this. Do you remember in fluid mechanics? When we wanted to calculate it, for example, if we have a this pipe control volume, do you remember? We make a control volume, then we had the V1, V2, and we had the forces, and we used the uh, momentum. to calculate the force which uh, comes to uh, this. This is the control uh, volume method. We consider a control volume and we consider all incomes and outcomes and then we can calculate the, pop, uh, the force, the mass and everything. And we had a uh, continuity equation and momentum inside V1 and we have the velocity which goes out, yes? And then we use this formula to calculate the, the force which comes to this. And this is one of the very important and valuable tools in uh, fluid mechanics to analyzing the uh, flow. And all the formula that you learned in the bachelor is our base change into the uh, river. You only have the discharge, and you calculate the velocity, uh, sorry, you calculate the depth, and you have the average velocity. You do not look at the inside what happens here. For example, if uh, uh, in the um, uh, closed hy hydraulic for the pipes, hydraulics of the pipe, city distribution inside the bend, and how it happens, and why the, the head loss uh, happening, you only have a rough head loss formula. So, it is based on the constant volume uh, system and you do not go to the details. So, it is very easy. You have a pollution which comes from inside this, uh, 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 from the right side of the river and you want how, uh, to see how this pollutant goes through this river and uh, goes through the uh, um, transverse and also longitude. When you want to see this, then you cannot use this kind of approach because you need the, the information, detailed information. You want to know, for example, if you here, you want to see if erosion happens here or not, then you need more details here. You want to see how is the velocity change here? Is the velocity near the walls? Uh, uh, how is the t um, shear stress on the walls? And where the shear stress is maximum to know where the uh, uh, erosion is more, you know. For example, in the uh, river engineering, you need to more know more details. Then you can understand. 
in these kind of uh, methods, then you cannot use a control volume. You need to use another method. We will go to field approach. In field approach, we do not consider uh, a, whole, a whole area as a bulk. We will go to the details. We make the medium in a smaller part and we will see what happens inside. Uh, inside. And for this, we will use usually two kind of approach. One, Eulerian coordinates and Lagrangian co coordinates. In Eulerian method, mm, we consider one point with uh, exact um, coordinate uh, x and y and we uh, analyze the change there. For example, pre how pressure changes here, how concentration changes here. We do not look at the particles, we look at the point. I want to know here, uh, we have this uh, 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 room. I want to see to this point, how the temperature changes in the manner of time, how the pollution changes in the manner of time. But in the Lagrangian method, it is not like this. Every particles in the sphere is, we follow it, where the particle goes and how it moves. Of course, it is very complicated. So, in this slide, when you move from left to the right, it becomes much more harder to solve, but it gives you more details. It's, it is in all your life. If you want to buy, buy a laptop, and you only ask your friend what laptop is good and he said this one and you will buy it, it's easy. It's a very bulk model, uh, but if you are a sensitive person, you want to buy the cheapest and the best, so you, you will lose several times in the internet and finally you will buy the things that your friend said. It ha usually happens like this. So, you put, so uh, I give this example to know that sometimes it's not too good to put a lot of time because when you need a general things, it's when you want to only design a pipe system for for your for a city, and you want to know, uh, uh, for example, you have a pipe system, and the water goes like this, a big pipe system. You need to know how much power when the water goes like this, how much uh, force comes to the bend. Then you you need to reinforce here, yes, to control the uh, pipe not to break. But because when the water uh, uh, bends, then the force will comes to the um, pipe and it breaks. Breaks. I I'm, I don't talk about a small pipe. I'm talking about a very big type pipe that bring a water for a big city, for example, and <coughs> maybe the diameter is two or three meter, and th then the forces are so much high, so you need some reinforcement behind to control the movement. So, you must know how much power is coming to, but in this case, you do not need a lot of uh, um, information behind the computer and finally, you will buy the things that your friends say three days ago to you. So, <coughs> it is uh, when something you think it is very important, but it is not very important then you will pay for the Lagrangian method, but you will get the result finally like a first one. So, and you put 10 days uh, or maybe uh, you put a lot of time, a lot of energy and you calculate something that you can calculate with a normal formula easily. Maybe it is more uh, uh, precise, but it is not necessary because we usually in engineering part, when we calculate, for example, it is 200 kilo, kilo newton, then when you, you want to make, you will get it for some uh, <coughs> region of, uh, I do not know name in English, safety. yes, a safety factor, I forgot. Safety, uh, you consider the safety factor to be sure that nothing happened. So, it is not necessary to go to this more, but sometimes we need this. For example, when you do research, you need uh, uh, some more details. Uh, formula, some mathematical formula, and it is easy to solve, but uh, algebraic uh, uh, formula, and it is uh, very easy to solve, but 
these method is usually uh, differential equations or partial differential equation and for solving them uh, there are sometimes some analytical for some simple uh, uh, examples with uh, um, to see more details not bulk because when we, are, we want to model pollutant transport we usually we are going to more details again uh, uh, I should even in these we have also different um, I mean we can go in, in only, uh, only uh, one dimensional we can consider it two dimensional I mean that for solving the problems usually you have different uh, um, you, you can have a very very detailed and you can have it very very uh, bulk this is you that decide for your uh, uh, equation for always you should see what what is the best uh, decision uh, and we, in which detail we should look to have the best answer if you choose the more complicated one it is not necessary you will get to a better result don't forget because when you choose a more complicated uh, method about the co computational hydraulics I mean field method and we want to see the details so we are going to solve partially differential equations or differential equations and this is the field of computational hydraulics so for this we have hydraulics and hydrodynamics and hydrology which is the equations hydraulics or CFD and what are the things here we are discussing about the different types of model based on the scale because uh, with different scale we can uh, uh, have it lumped lumped again is similar to the uh, black box model not black box no it is not a black box model it's a, you know in hydraulic we have two equation yeah three equation energy equation momentum equation and continuity equation do you remember because we don't to do it deterministic very deterministic it is slumped you know uh, so because we we will use continuity because uh, so we when we use the continuity equation we cannot see that it is a black box model because at least we are using one mathematical model and and it is true we, we work on the uh, the law of mass yes constant mass the mass doesn't change yes uh, and uh, in hydrological models do you remember in uh, all of you must uh, have the course hydrology so you have the um, um, we have a hydrograph of input hydrograph for example for a river and we want to see what is the output and we had an input hydrograph and we wanted to see what is the output hydrograph uh, on the wear of the uh, dam uh, and again we use a model in, in the hydrology book we use a model to solve it and it was based on again a continuity equation these uh, when uh, any and momentum equation so when we come to uh, disturbed model we, we have again different degrees Fair, we can do it first dimension we can do it in two dimension and we can do it in three dimension again it depends on what is our uh, problem uh, and how are the um, one or two meter uh, width and you, you want to uh, study 300 meter lens of this or one kilometer lens of this then you can forget about the change in the depth and the change in the um, trans because the lens is much more than the uh, mm, is very uh, longer than the V's and the depths. So you Ganga, okay. If you want to do it in Ganga, then the uh, how much how much is the mm, mm, uh, V's of the river approximately 100 meter? I didn't see it. 200 meter 200 meter oh, yeah it's a, and the depths 
ship is going inside it or not? Is it more than 10 meter? Uh, the uh, it's uh, poor it's uh, material inside the river, and you want to see, and you want to make a. I I can draw it, and it's better. And there is a factory here, and this factory poor the waste material inside this river. And you are going to make a water treatment, uh, not water, uh, uh, to get the water for irrigation or for drinking from one point here. For example, one kilometer downstream. And you want to see if you uh, put, get the water from here, if how much pollutant come to uh, to your uh, drinking water uh, system. Then we are co uh, we are sure that uh, the the pollution that comes here doesn't reach in one kilometer to the other side. And because we are going to model this part, you cannot assume that the because when you consider one dimensional for here you get only one number for concentration. Here you will get one number because you assume that uh, in the transfers and in the depths the concentration is constant. This assumption is true, then this kind of modeling is true. Otherwise it is not true. And here exactly it is not true because we, we are sure that the, in the here uh, the concentration uh, here with here is completely different. Yes, because 200 meter is a very big uh, uh, vis, and it takes a lot of time that the pollutant from here reaches to the other side. Small. 2,000 uh, kilometer, 2,000 kilometer, no. or 2,000 meter, 2,000 meter, not 2,000 kilometer. Yeah, 2,000 kilometer. Okay, if you want to uh, model 2,000 kilometer, then uh, uh, you can and. Uh, you can consider it sometimes uh, one dimensional as a rough estimation. Do it two, two dimensional at least, or sometimes three dimensional. But usually for river, two dimensional is sufficient because again the depth in comparison to the Vs is very low, and you can assume that in the depths it becomes uh, faster, uh, um, uh, um, similar to each other. So, in usually the rivers is considered two dimension because it's important. Engineers are not very. Uh, I, I mean, you cannot go very so much to the more complicated models like two dimensional and three dimensional because you don't have enough data for calibration. You don't know how is changing the here and here because when you make it two dimensional, you need more data for making and you and then you need to assume because you don't have the data you need to assume and when you ask to make a, a better on this is why we cannot go really to more uh, detailed yes in the laboratory and these things you can go in more details because you can get more data easily mm -hmm. this is based on uh, uh, one dimensional, two dimensional, and three dimensional continent, or you know, uh, regional. You are in regional scale, or you are uh, in laboratory. You are going in very details, and maybe your t uh, your delta x is one millimeter to see very very detail. But when you are going to the Ganga River and you want to model uh, two thousand kilometers, it, the scale is different now. You don't do, do it one millimeter uh, section. And uh, about the time, also we have some uh, divisions because, because you can model different time. You can um, uh, model as a, uh, what is the English word? I forget. Constant during time, uh, or you, I mean, you. you uh, uh, consider that and you consider the change. So, in this way, you must uh, um, 
you have two different uh, equations and you must solve another equations uh, we are talking about if we have time and we want to change the times you can see the short term effect you can see the long term effects and again in short term like this we have large medium scale you can see daily when you are modeling the experimental setups you are usually work on very uh, detailed scale, you, your time steps is very small in second, minutes like this and uh, your uh, spatial uh, uh, steps also is very small, one millimeter, centimeter like this, but we are going to the reverse and uh, do you have any question? Angry. <laughs> so finish the course. Okay. Okay. What?